Hi, in this video, I'm looking at the scalar product of vectors or the dot product. Now the scalar product of vectors is defined as if you've got vector A and vector B, and you know the angle between the two vectors, the dot product between A and B or the vector scalar product of a and b is the product of the magnitudes of those two vectors multiplied by the cos of the angle between them and it's called the scalar product because you get a scalar as your result because the magnitude of a is a scalar the magnitude of b is a scalar and cos of an angle is also a scalar so we've got three scalars multiplied together our answer is a scalar what I want to look at further is what if we have our vectors in component form. So this is all mighty good if we have our vectors in polar form because then I know the angle to A, I know the angle to B, the angle between them is just the difference between them. But if I've got it in component form, life may or may not be a bit harder. So let's see if I can work out what this would be in component form. So if I look at this as a triangle, I've got vector B, I'm going to just make it a bit bigger, and I've got vector A, but what if I set this up as a vector addition? So that would mean that if I add vector A, I have vector A there. But I'm actually not going to have the addition, I want to do the subtraction. I'm going to subtract vector A. So if I come down here, so that's negative of vector A, and that means I've got this vector here, which is the vector B minus A, because it's B plus negative A. So now I just need to get an angle on my inside of my triangle. If I think about if vector B was here, if this was vector B, we'd know this angle here, the ve angle between them. And our vertically opposite rule says that this angle is the same. So now I've got an angle on the inside of my triangle, and I've got vector B, vector negative A, and vector B minus A, which means that I can go and use my cosine rule. So my cosine rule says that the magnitude of B minus A squared will be the magnitude of negative A squared plus the magnitude of B squared mul uh, minus of two times the magnitude of negative A times the magnitude of B cause the angle between our two vectors. And that so magnitude. Now the negative doesn't matter, so that's just the same as the magnitude of b minus a squared because, because the magnitude of negative a is the same as the magnitude of a. They are the same value because the direction doesn't matter. They're the same length vector. So we just really get something that's in our cosine rule form. And we can see, oops, I forgot the two in there. I've got this AB cos theta from my rule up here, giving me my AB cos down here. So they're actually related. So if I rearrange this equation by moving stuff from this side over, I'll have B minus A squared minus magnitude of A squared minus the magnitude of B squared equals negative 2 magnitude of a magnitude of b cos theta and if i divide everything by this negative 2 all my signs are going to swap so my negative a is going to turn into positive a my negative b is going to turn into positive b and my positive b minus a is going to turn into negative b minus a all over 2 equals the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B cos theta. And if we look at this, I can now take our dot product 
and replace it over here. So I now know that A dotted with B is the magnitude of A squared plus the magnitude of B squared minus the magnitude of B minus A squared all over 2. Now there's further we can go with this because if I've got my vectoring component form, it's a bit of work to find all the magnitudes, but we could use this form. But I can go further because I know that, say, the magnitude of A is the square root of the first part of A squared plus the second part of A squared. So A1, A2, if A was the vector A1, A2, then its magnitude is that. Same for B. B minus A, well, if we think about the vector B minus A, well, that's going to be the vector B1 minus A1 and B2 minus A2. So that means that the magnitude of B minus A will be the square root of B1 minus A1 squared plus B2 minus A2 squared. And also, that means, if I do a bit of rearranging while I'm here, the magnitude of A squared is A1 squared plus A2 squared, and so on for this one. So I can go and substitute all of this information in and find that my dot product then becomes, well, A squared becomes A1 squared plus a2 squared because a squared is that and then b squared well if we add on b squared that's going to be b1 squared plus b2 squared and then if we add on our subtraction well that's going to be minus all of this under here because b minus a squared is going to be b1 minus a1 squared plus b2 minus a2 uh, squared if I square both sides. So that means that over here I'm going to have minus b1 minus a1 squared plus b2 minus a2 squared. So now I've got this for my dot product. It's all just down to the component forms of our vector. So let's see if we can tidy it up. Okay, so if I start looking at tidying this up, this means my dot product is going to be a1 squared plus a2 squared. There's not much I can do about this at the moment. But then I'm going to have the negative of everything on the inside. So I'm going to have minus b1 minus a1 squared and minus b2 minus a2 all squared because it was positive bring the negative in it becomes negative this one was also positive bring the negative in it becomes negative and so now what happens if i expand these two terms so i've got a1 squared plus a2 squared plus b1 squared plus b2 squared and then i've got minus the expansion of this well b1 squared minus 2a1b1 plus a1 squared will be that one. And if I do the second one, I've mixed up my colors slightly, but that's okay. I'm going to have minus b2 squared minus 2a2b2 plus a2 squared. And so now, if I do some simplifying, we can see that my plus a1 squared here will cancel out with this minus a1 squared here. So that cancels with that. I've got a plus a2 squared. Well, I've got a minus a2 squared. I've put that squared in the wrong spot, haven't I? So that shouldn't be there, that should be there. 
So I've got this plus a2 squared with this minus a2 squared, so that cancels. And I've just realized all the way through I've been forgetting my divided by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, can't forget my divide by 2s. Go back to my simplifying. I got a b1 squared, which is going to cancel up with this minus b1 squared here, so they cancel. And a b2 squared will cancel up with this minus b2 squared here. So that gives me my dot product is going to be, I've got the minus of the negative 2a1b1. So I've got plus 2a1b1. And I got minus negative 2a2b2. So I got plus 2a2b2 all over 2. And now our 2s cancel. And that leaves us with our dot product in component form to be a dot b equals a1 b1 plus a2 b2. And that is it. So that means that the dot product in component form is the product of the corresponding components, the x components product the y components product and summed. And if it's in polar form, we can use our original definition that a, b cos theta, the angle between them multiplied by the angles, uh, magnitudes. And so that's it. That's our two rules for the dot product.